Well, hi there, friends. Coming to you with a video on John chapter 19, verse 41, through John chapter 20, verse 18. And you can see that today we're looking at sort of a, a big chunk of scripture here. Um, but one of the things that I want to do is point out something that's distinctive about John's recording of Jesus's resurrection. And there's just going to be one simple point, and, and here's what it is. Um, it's the idea that John records a ton of of seemingly insignificant or minute details in his resurrection account. And the scholars that study ancient literature like this, here's what they all point out. That if this was some sort of myth or some sort of fable, or if this was made up centuries after Jesus' resurrection, that these types of details wouldn't have been put in the story. That the details that are here uh, actually go to prove the point that this is genuine history and it's intended to be read as such. So let's just read through this and I just want to point out a, a few details that um, John includes that we're supposed to notice and that I think drive home the point for us a little bit more. So here's what we see. First of all, later when Joseph of Arimathea, so he's going to tell us exactly who's going to ask for the body. Asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. So we have one of the heroes of this story who's going to preserve Jesus's body um, is a secret disciple and a fearful disciple. So we're not exactly making our heroes out to be people that they're not. With Pilate's permission, he came up and he took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, who John's going to tell us, um, earlier had visited Jesus at night. That's in John chapter 3. And Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. I mean, so think about in this very first section, all the different details that begin to emerge. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden a new tomb which no one had ever been laid in. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So he says the same place Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. I mean, once again, more details. Early on in the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene. Now this is the, the same Mary who in Luke chapter 7, Jesus drives demons out of. Um, she sort of fits with Nicodemus and she fits with Joseph of Arimathea that the people who are in the resurrection story aren't the type of people that you would generally expect to be part of the Messiah's victory. She went and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance and so she came running to Simon Peter to the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved that's John's way of talking about himself in his gospel they've taken the lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him so Peter and John the other disciple they they started for the tomb they started for the tomb they were both running so John wants us to know like we wanted to get there quickly but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I mean, isn't this, this is another just absolutely fascinating detail, isn't it? John wants us to know he's faster than Peter. <laughs> he bent over and um, looked at the linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. It sort of shows their personalities. John, John's drawing this out for us. John's a little, a little bit more timid. Peter's just sort of rush right in. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well. The cloth that was wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth still lying in its place, separate from the linen. And finally, the other disciple who'd reached the tomb first. So John just wants to remind you that he outran Peter. <laughs> also went inside. He saw and believed. Now, this is a 
fascinating addition here because most people think, you initially read that, you think, oh, they believe that Jesus was resurrected. No, they believe, I think what we're seeing is that they believe Mary. They believe that his body has been taken. That's what they believe. And so in this earliest account of Jesus's resurrection, um, they're not making themselves out to be wonderful, faithful disciples who said, I saw this coming. No, keep going. This is verse nine right here. They still did not understand from the scriptures that Jesus had to be raised from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. They went home. I mean, this is another detail of the story. The disciples check out. They think the story's over. Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over, looked into the tomb, saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken away the Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. And at this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Why are you, who are you looking for? And thinking he was the gardener. <laughs> and if you didn't catch the message on Sunday, uh, I made the point that I don't think she's wrong. Jesus is a gardener. She said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary, just a one word sermon, Mary, just her name, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbi, teacher. Jesus said, don't hold on to me for I'm not yet ascended to the father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I'm ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she, and she told them he had said these things to her. Mary Magdalene is the first one who comes and preaches this news that we might even say is good news, that we might even say is gospel. Like Mary is the one. Mary is the first preacher of resurrection. Mary's the one. She's spreading the word. And so all throughout um, the, the, the commentaries and the people that wrestle with resurrection and celebrate resurrection, and there's this, this subtle, like underlying, it's hard to believe for people back in the first century, it was so hard to believe that the first person to witness to the resurrection was a woman because back in that day, a woman's testimony wouldn't even hold up in court. And so this is a detail that is assuredly part of the historical account that they would not have made this up. It would have been a man who encountered Jesus first, not a woman. But that's not the way it happened. And that's not the way it was recorded. And that's not the story that's being told. So from the details about who asked for Jesus' body to the details about where they laid Jesus' body to the details about Mary going to the tomb and then John and Peter racing to the tomb to the details about how John's faster than Peter to the details about Mary being the first person to proclaim gospel. It's a story that's full of details because it's a story That's history. That's what it is. And that's what all the details in there show us. Um, the truth is in those details. And the details tell us what John's intention is with this scripture. So, hope that's an encouragement to you. Read the story again and notice all the many ways that it points to the fact that it's a true story. Have a great day.